Alright, day three of the Ultra Olympus. Toe cap's already coming off. Way to stay consistent, Ultra. I think we were right around there is where it started. We went all up, definitely there, that guy. All up these ridges, stopped his little campsite way up in those trees right there. Came all the way down, and now we're going back down. I think, or up, I don't know, you can never tell. But, it's very shortly, I think. One quick little steep, thousand footer. I think we'll get a gnarly view. There we go. Way better. So after that little climb, I think we just kind of turn a corner and like, bam! Rainier's right there. So that should be really cool. I was told on clear weather days up back at the uh, the top, you can see like Adams, Rainier, and Mount St. Helens. So, whatever. It's beautiful either way. But this is the Goat Rocks Wilderness, and I haven't seen a mountain goat yet, and I'm almost more excited for that, which makes no sense whatsoever. <laughs> but we did have a small herd of pikas or pikas the last like couple of miles yesterday, and every time you hear one, we just like call back like me, which you know is fun. It's like hiker TV. We don't have a lot to do out here. <laughs> All right. All that stuff from like the last few minutes is behind me. And now I think I'm about to round a corner and get a view of Rainier. Oh, wow. Yeah. You can sort of see the knife edge back that way. Rainier. I wonder how close we get. Apparently, oh. oh yeah, we still got like half a mile up. Where are we? All right, time to go downhill. <laughs> oh, finally, Washington. The sky's starting to clear over there, which is really good because it has been. A four mile, very cold, and very foggy ascent. Oh, we got some sun popping up over there. All right. Well, this is just getting gnarly. Walking in the clouds. No water, though. Wouldn't mind some of that. Oh, Washington. We're getting there. Jesus. I'm sure this is usually a beautiful view, huh? I don't even know what this place is called. But we're gonna go down a mile, maybe a little less. Hopefully at the bottom of this fog. Where we were at, a, we filled up water before this climb. We're dry camping tonight. It was just below this fog and it was so scenic. But we figured let's get another four or five in to make the eventual hike into Snoqualmie Pass, where I think we're taking a day shorter. If we do 225s and then like a 15, we'll get there early afternoon, hopefully check into a hotel, all that good stuff. Check in on the passport situation, make some phone calls, and rest, and almost certainly <laughs> I don't even remember what's almost certain. Jesus. Oh yeah. It's we were told we we're gonna have two really good days of weather. Today was day one or day two of those two really good days. That's not happening so much. But Either tomorrow or maybe the next day, it's supposed to be really nasty. And we were kind of hoping to uh, time that. I just don't think it's possible to completely avoid. Although a week after that, it's supposed to be just like pretty solid. And we're gonna eat up as many miles as possible with that good weather. So we can actually see all this stuff. Missed some epic views today. 
but the goal is to as much as it's raining to spend all that time in a hotel maybe on plan zero who knows but just got to get there first so I, for, I can't even remember if i mentioned this before my stove is dead i've been clinging on the noses and i'm pretty sure my new one should be at the inn in Snoqualmie where for staying i don't have to pay a fee to collect it so that'll be nice it's i thought about just buying one of those cheapo super light ones and i almost regret not doing so after meeting a hiker who had one it's so light sure it's not the most fuel efficient but it's so light and tiny i thought it'd be fun to play with for like 15 bucks for a few weeks but i didn't have time to make that decision or rather i learned too late so and i still think it's pretty cool mom right before she left for a wedding vacation uh was able to send me the old original pocket rocket that I carried for the whole AT and all the camping I've done before that. So I think it's kind of cool that that sucker, I have the pocket rocket too now and it's been okay. I think mine might've just been kind of like maybe a lemon. The, the threading is coming off, but it's always been kind of sputtery and just not as good as the old reliable original. So that'll be fun to have back. And once I have that, I might break away and do some solo hiking for a bit. Or just, I don't know, hard to see, hard to tell. It's starting to clear up. We were way up there. Man, it just looks, it's not spooky, ancient. Isn't that ridiculous? That beautiful, vibrant, green and blue spot. It's just out there and we just have this curtain, this blanket of, even up ahead you can, it probably won't show up in this. Anyway, it's like a total, I don't know, it's just a wall of gray and over to the right you can see the, uh, oh man. Well, it looks like at least we're probably camping under the blanket, which mean our stuff probably won't get so wet. My stuff on this hike has gotten so much wetter than it ever got on the AT. All those downpours under my tarp, good to go. I got some splash up on my underquilt. It was usually fine when I pulled it out at lunch, if I ever even did that. It was out here. Man, even sometimes in the drier areas of like NorCal, if we had a d I mean, I would be under trees and everything. You wake up, the foot box is always wet. Lately, with all this moisture in the air, I'll wake up in my underquilt and top quilt on the left side of my hammock, which is where my head is is uh, always wet or there's droplets on it and you know you shove it all into your pack hope to pull it out at lunch but after a few days of that like you can't really dry it out when it's this for days on end so interesting as humid as it is out east too i would have thought that was way more of a thing out there but yeah even happened here in oregon and norcal which you know weird and the view. Get that to my left. Man. Down in there was that part earlier that looked all um, lit up, sunny. I feel like Simba. bunch of pikas over there and they just keep going like me sometimes they enter back you know make friends with the neighbors but now it's time to eat see the trail looping around down there and this is again the blanket it's got to be the sun it's cold as balls right now and we were just in this huge thick cloud same last night, you could see that view, and then it got colder and this cloud just came in and everything's wet, of course. And I was very slow getting ready this morning just because I didn't want to take my puffy off. And then, obviously, there's still a thick cloud in front of me right here. But where there's open air, like in the valley, it just opened up. And it's got to be the sun coming out over there and heating things up a little bit. 
It's like once the sun comes out, that weird dewy rain just kind of stops. So hopefully that means it'll get better as the day goes on. I'm also, don't know if you can see, right around there, the trail goes around that mountain. And I'm hoping it kind of weaves its way around the end over there into that valley. It looks like for the most part of today, we're going down, which is great too, because I heard the weather was supposed to get worse today. Well, next like five days. <laughs> but um, the lower we go, the warmer it'll be. And even if it does rain on us, it'll just be rain. I found out here when I had the tarp set up and everything and it's just rain, no big deal. In fact, it's only happened like eight times, 10 times. But when we're up high in the rain cloud, like we were last night, that dew, man, like last night was the worst I've ever seen it. It was also really cool looking and spooky looking when you hear those elk bugles way in the distance at like two in the morning. But we could see it like talking to one another in camp while we were having our dinner. And I was reading on my phone and I, like you could actually tell that it, it was like noticeably hard, not harder to read, but like you, it was so thick, you could just see the difference from like, you know, the one foot away from my face that the phone was that like the, the phone light lit up the fog. It was pretty weird. Getting up to go pee with my headlamp on was <laughs> pretty interesting. I was like, man, it'd be cool to have like another person with a cool camera just taking a cool shot of like that big rock up there while I was walking to, to find my spot. I should be having the camera face this way, man. It's way cooler. Let's see if we can't, hang on. Sorta? Eh, whatever. All right, I need to put a glove on. 